listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with Master Storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 329. We'll be finishing the book of Ezekiel and starting in chapter 47. The bronze man and God finish up their tour of the temple. Little does Ezekiel know that the tour doesn't finish in the temple, but way down into the river, all the way to the Dead Sea, where, ironically, the Dead Sea becomes teeming with life, all because of God's blessings of peace on his people. And in chapter 48, we see the division of land among the 12 tribes of Israel. But don't look at this so much as a lesson on real estate, but think of it more like Disneyland. I remember seeing a clip of Walt Disney walking through a bunch of orange groves. And in his mind, he could see the future of what would one day become Disneyland. And in the same way, God envisions his new kingdom. And as he divides the land, like a teacher does assign seating, each tribe has a place and order is brought to God's people. And in the book of 1 Peter, Peter tells the believers that they must prepare And be strengthened for the suffering that is to come. But it's not a suffering for doing bad, but a suffering for doing the Lord's work. If this doesn't make much sense to you, think of it as suffering when somebody joins basic training for the military. It's sort of a self-imposed suffering, but they know it's going to bring a greater good. It's going to make them stronger. And in the end, they're fighting for something much bigger than themselves. But... There is suffering nonetheless, and those who want to go into basic training should probably prepare themselves mentally and physically before that day comes. And in the same way, the Christians must prepare themselves mentally, spiritually, and even physically to endure the hardships that lay ahead. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Ezekiel 47 The Water Flowing from the Temple The man led me back to the entrance of the temple. I saw water coming out from under the east gate of the temple. The front of the temple is on the east side. The water flowed down from under the south end of the temple and ran south of the altar. The man led me out through the north gate and then around the outside to the outer gate on the east side. The water was flowing out on the south side of the gate. The man walked east with a measuring cord in his hand. He measured 500 meters and he told me to walk through the water at that place. There the water was waist deep. He measured another 500 meters, but there the water was too deep to walk across. It had become a river. The water was deep enough to swim in. It was a river that was too deep to walk across. Then the man said to me, Son of man, did you pay close attention to the things you saw? Then the man led me back along the side of the river. As I walked back along the side of the river, I saw many trees on both sides of the water. He said to me, This water flows east, down into the valley of the Jordan River. When it flows into the Dead Sea, the salt water there will become fresh water. There will be all kinds of living things where this river flows. Even the Dead Sea will be full of fish, because this river will make the water fresh. Wherever this river flows, there will be life. You will see fishermen standing by the Dead Sea all the way from En Gedi to En Eglain. You will see them throwing their fish nets and catching all kinds of fish, as many kinds as are in the Great Sea. But the swamps and small marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. All kinds of fruit trees will grow on both sides of the river. Their leaves will never become dry and fall. The fruit will never stop growing on those trees. The trees will produce fruit every month because the water for the trees comes from the temple. The fruit from the trees will be for food. Their leaves will be for healing. Division of the land for the tribes. 
This is what the Lord God says. These are the borders for dividing the land among the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph will have two parts. You will divide the land equally. I promise to give this land to your ancestors. So I am giving this land to you. Here are the borders of the land. On the north side, it goes from the Great Sea by way of Hethlon, where the road turns towards Hamath, and on to Zedat, Berathah, Sebraim, which is on the border between Damascus and Hamath, and Hazer Hadakon, which is on the border of Haran. So the border will go from the Great Sea to Hazar Anan and the northern border of Damascus and Hamath. This will be on the north side. On the east side, the border will go from Hazar Anan between Haran and Damascus and continue along the Jordan River between Gilead and the land of Israel to the Dead Sea and all the way to Tamar. This will be the eastern border. On the south side, the border will go from Tamar all the way to the oasis at Meribah Kadesh. Then it will follow the brook of Egypt to the Great Sea. This will be the southern border. On the west side, the Great Sea will be the border all the way to the area in front of Lebo Hamath. This will be the western border. So you will divide this land among you for the tribes of Israel. You will divide it as property for yourselves and for the immigrants who live among you and who have had children among you. You must treat these immigrants the same as people born in Israel. They will get a share of the land given to the tribes of Israel. The tribe where the immigrant lives must give him some land. This is what the Lord God says. Ezekiel 48 the land for the tribes of Israel. The northern border goes east from the coast to Hethlon to Hamath Pass, and then all the way to Hazar Anan. This is on the border between Damascus and Hamath. The land for the tribes in this group will go from the east of these borders to the west. From north to south, the tribes in this area are Dan, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Ephraim, Reuben, and Judah the special section of land. The next area of land will be for a special use. This land is south of Judah's land. This area is 12.5 kilometers long from north to south. From east to west, it will be as wide as the land that belongs to the other tribes. The temple will be in the middle of this section of land. You will dedicate this land to the Lord. It will be 12.5 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide. This special area of land will be divided among the priests and Levites. The priests will get one part of this area. The land will be 12.5 kilometers long on the north side, 5 kilometers wide on the west side, 5 kilometers wide on the east side, and 12.5 kilometers long on the south side. The Lord's temple will be in the middle of this area of land. This land is for the priests who were chosen from the descendants of Zadok. They are the only ones who continue to serve me. When the people of Israel, including the other Levites, turned away from me, this share from this holy part of the land will be especially for these priests. It will be next to the land of the Levites. Next to the land for the priests, the Levites will have a share of the land. It will also be 12.5 kilometers long and 5 kilometers wide. Together, these two sections of land will be 12.5 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide. The priests and Levites must never sell or trade any of this land. It is the best land and belongs to the Lord. It must be used only for Him. The shares for the city property. There will be an area of land 2.5 kilometers wide by 12.5 kilometers long that is left over from the land given to the priests and Levites. This land could be for the city, for grasslands, for animals, and for building houses. The common people may use this land. The city will be in the middle of it. These are the city's measurements. The north side will be 2,250 meters. The south side will be 2,250 meters. The east side will be 2,250 meters. The west side will be 2,250 meters. 
The city will have grasslands, and they will be 125 meters on the north and 125 meters on the south. They will be 125 meters on the east and 125 meters on the west. What is left of the length along the side of the holy area will be five kilometers on the east and five kilometers on the west. This land will be along the side of the holy area. This land will grow food for the city workers. The city workers from all the tribes of Israel will farm this land. This special area of land will be square. It will be 12.5 kilometers long by 12.5 kilometers wide. You must set apart this area for its special purposes. One part is for the priests, one part is for the Levites, and one part is for the city. Part of that special land will be for the ruler of the country. That special area of land is square. It is 12.5 kilometers long by 12.5 kilometers wide. Part of this special land is for the priests. Part of it is for the Levites, and part of it is for the temple. The temple is in the middle of this area of land. The rest of the land belongs to the ruler of the country. The ruler will get the area between the land of Benjamin and the land of Judah. South of this special area will be the land for the tribes that lived east of the Jordan River. Each tribe will get a section of land that goes from the eastern border to the western coast. From north to south, these tribes are Benjamin, Simeon, Issachar, Zebulun and Gad. The southern border of Gad's land will go from Tamar to the oasis at Meribah Kadesh, then follow the brook of Egypt to the great sea. This is the land that you will divide among the tribes of Israel. This is what each group will get. This is what the Lord God says. The Gates of the City These are the gates of the city. The gates will be named for the tribes of Israel. The north side of the city will be 2,250 meters long. There will be three gates, Reuben's gate, Judah's gate, and Levi's gate. The east side of the city will be 2,250 meters long. There will be three gates, Joseph's gate, Benjamin's gate, and Dad's gate. The south side of the city will be 2,250 meters long. There will be three gates, Simeon's gate, Issachar's gate, and Zebulun's gate. The west side of the city will be 2,250 meters long. There will be three gates, Gad's gate, Asher's gate, and Naphtali's gate. The distance around the city will be nine kilometers. From now on, the name of the city will be, The Lord is there. Footnote, in Hebrew, this name sounds like Jerusalem. First Peter chapter 4 Changed Lives Christ suffered while he was in his body, so you should strengthen yourselves with the same kind of thinking Christ had. The one who accepts suffering in this life has clearly decided to stop sinning. Strengthen yourselves so that you will live your lives here on earth doing what God wants, not the evil things that people want to do. In the past, you wasted too much time doing what those who don't know God like to do. You were living immoral lives, doing the evil things you wanted to do. You're always getting drunk, having wild drinking parties, and doing shameful things in your worship of idols. Now those friends, Think it is strange that you no longer join them and all the wild and wasteful things they do. And so they say bad things about you. But they will have to face God to explain what they have done. He is the one who will soon judge everyone, those who are living now and those who have already died. Some were told the good news before they died. They were criticized by others and their life here on earth. But it was God's plan that they hear the good news so that they could have a new life through the Spirit. Be good managers of God's gifts. The time is near when all things will end, so keep your minds clear and control yourself. This will help you in your prayers. Most important of all, 
love each other deeply because love makes you willing to forgive many sins. Open your homes to each other and share your food without complaint. God has shown you his grace in many different ways. So be good servants and use whatever gift he has given you in a way that will best serve each other. If your gift is speaking, your words should be like words from God. If your gift is serving, you should serve with the strength that God gives. Then it is God who will be praised and everything through Jesus Christ. Power and glory belong to him forever and ever. Amen. Suffering as a follower of Christ. My friends, don't be surprised at the painful things that you are now suffering, which are testing your faith. Don't think that something strange is happening to you, but you should be happy that you are sharing in the sufferings of Christ. You will be happy and full of joy when his great power is shown to the world. When people say bad things to you because you follow Christ, consider it a blessing. When that happens, it shows that God's spirit, the spirit of glory is with you. You may suffer, but don't let it be because you murder, steal, make trouble, or try to control other people's lives. But if you suffer for being a Christian, don't be ashamed. You should praise God for that name. It is time for judging to begin. That judging will begin with God's family. If it begins with us, then what will happen to those who don't accept the good news of God? If it is hard for even a good person to be saved, what will happen to the one who is against God and full of sin? So, if you suffer because you are doing what God wants, you should trust your lives to Him. He is the one who made you, and you can trust Him. So continue to do good. Psalm 133, a song of David for going up to the temple. Oh, how wonderful, how pleasing it is when God's people all come together as one. It is as precious as the oil poured over the high priest's head, the oil that runs down his beard and onto his robes. It is as pleasing as rain from Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion. That's where the Lord has promised his blessing of eternal life. Thank you, everyone. That was day 329. Join us for day 330. We will begin the book of Daniel. I'll be giving a detailed introduction to the book of Daniel in the next episode. And we will finish the book of First Peter. How does Peter feel about elders? And he uses a metaphor of a lion who's prowling around looking for stray people to eat. Just who is Peter referring to exactly? And he finishes the letter by sending greetings from Babylon. Oh, wait a minute. This is long after the Babylonian Empire has been conquered. Perhaps it's a code name. You'll have to join us to find out more. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.